we're going to assume that you are starting to love working in PowerPoint. Even though it's a fabulous program, it isn't the end-all solution for everything we do. As a matter of fact, it troubles me to see people doing very complex things in PowerPoint that could have been a lot easier if they used the right tool. Often applications like Word or Publisher might be a better choice. We often invest a lot of time and effort, though, creating things in PowerPoint, like images and flowcharts, that we could use somewhere else. But we kind of get stuck in PowerPoint. That's where it was created, and it has its own little features. Now what? There are several options we could try. But if whatever we have created needs to be used in other places, especially if those aren't Word, Excel, Outlook, or Publisher, we need to not only be able to copy and paste them, we need to transform them into a format that any application can use. That format is a picture format. Let's take the camera that we created by merging and grouping shapes. If we tried to copy and paste that into a web page program, for example, it wouldn't quite know what to do with it because it's actually two objects that are layered on top of each other and grouped. Instead, let's save the entire group as a picture. This feature has actually been available for a while, but not a lot of people seem to know about it. We start by selecting the items, and it's best if they're grouped together. In this case, we have the camera and we have the lens, but they are grouped together and not simply multiple pieces or objects that we've selected at the same time. The option to save something as a picture has been available for quite a while. People just overlook it. We access it by right-clicking on a selection and choosing the Save as Picture command. This displays a typical Save As window. That means there are several things we need to do. First, we need to select the location. And we're just going to go ahead and save this to the desktop. The second thing we need to do is make sure that our file format, or our Save As type, is correct. It's important to note that all of the major picture or image formats are here, including GIFs, JPEGs, PNGs, and TIFFs. We just need to select the one that we want. By far the most universally acceptable at this point are still GIFs and JPEGs. We'll go ahead and select a JPEG format. Now we need to give it a name, and we're simply going to call it Camera. Now with a click on the Save button on the bottom right side of the window, we have just saved that entire image that was created in PowerPoint using basic drawing objects as a picture, just like any other JPEG that we created or found, took with a camera, or scanned in on a scanner. Let's take a look at it. Let's go ahead and minimize PowerPoint, which shows us our desktop, which is where we saved our camera image. It's kind of down here on the corner, so we'll just drag it up a little bit where we can see it. It says a camera, and if we double click on it, it opens in whatever our default JPEG viewer is, and this happens to be the photo viewer. Now we can see the camera with all of the special effects, the beveled edges, and even the reflection that we can use anywhere we could normally use a JPEG image. If we take just a minute to think about the possibilities, we can now create actual JPEGs and GIFs and other types of images using just the tools that are available in PowerPoint, including the text tools. No extra expense for additional software, no new software to learn, no having to bounce back and forth between applications. It's all here, at our disposal, no matter where the elements come from, be they shapes, clip art images, grouped or merged, formatted using our branding colors. Once we envision what we want and make it using PowerPoint's tools, the Save As Picture command can be the last step in our own graphic design process, allowing us to create truly unique, customized images for our presentations and really any other work that we may ever do on our computer.